Hey, Tyler Theater Design Company. Going to do a uh, quick flip through on both these uh, home theater table books. Uh, if you like these books or if you end up liking this video and ordering these books, uh, please subscribe, maybe uh, share it, helps our channel. Uh, these books are invaluable if you're building a home theater or you're just into home theater or architectural in general. All right, thanks a lot. Hey, Tyler Theater Design Company. Going to go over a couple books that we uh, use for some research and just kind of getting some ideas flowing. So this is his first book, Theo Kalamarakis' Private Theaters, from about 1997, if I recall. Uh, I'm sure it says in here. And then I know this one's from 2003. This is actually my favorite. It's older, so a lot of the technology, of course, is going to be completely outdated. Uh, but you're still going to see some amazing stuff. So what I've done is I've marked a few of the the key theaters that I enjoy in here, but I'll just flip through and you can get these books on Amazon still. They're kind of hard to find um, in good shape. You'll see a bunch of them that are really rough, but I'm going to go ahead and flip through here. It's got, you know, forward from Theo Kalamarakis, who's uh, pretty much the most, uh, he's the most famous theater designer there is period. I don't think anybody else does home theaters um, like him. I think he's actually does some stuff for a company called Rava now. Uh, from my last thing I saw about 2019 or 2020 at Cedia. And so just kind of going through this, got a little forward from Roger Ebert. And then it's architectural. And what I like about these books is it's got the highlight of the theater itself. It gives a little bit of insight on it, a little bit about the homeowners on it, not too much. And then the first book here has got these huge fold out pages, which are super cool. So that right there is the lobby and the foyer. And this one here is kind of the first one I've got to, but this one there's actually a 10 minute, an eight or 10 minute video on YouTube. I'll look for a link for it and put it in my description, but uh, this is a pretty amazing theater. And what's cool is from this book in 97 to the video, which I think is about six or seven years old, you can see they've actually done a fair amount of updates, uh, screen size and things of that sort. Uh, I'm just gonna flip through these. I'm not gonna go crazy, but you can get the idea of the design and the aspect of all this, so. Here's the Paramount Theater, which I believe is in the second book as well. So you can just take a look at the, I mean, the just insane lobby there. You know, giant vintage movie posters. Let's see if I can find the uh, room itself on this one. So you can tell it's just a monster home theater. I mean, that's in a private home, but that's a, almost the size of a commercial theater you'd see in a small town. And then let's jump back in here to uh, the Uptown Theater. So again, amazing image and photographs for all the theaters. So again, I highly recommend getting this book, especially if you're designing a theater. I mean, I, I've had these books for 20 some years and I still reference back to them all the time when I'm working on a design. So the Apollo. And again, I'm not trying to spend 20 minutes showing you the book. I'm just gonna flip through and give you an idea. If you want something like this, go pick it up. Copper Beach Theater. another amazing lobbies and what kind of got me uh, thinking about doing a quick video on these books is we're working on our lobby now and I came back in here to get some ideas on it I actually wanted to do something like this but it's not gonna happen but you can tell just you know amazing foyers and lobbies and all these theaters and then get to the theater itself I'm not really a fan of this one but again the lobby is amazing see bubble hill I think that's Eddie Murphy's theater Yeah, this one's the Eddie Murphy you can see by his movies that are on. And again, it's just got, you know, box office, things of that sort. Similar box office to the TDA theater that I just showed that was in that grocery store. So that's kind of cool. So another cinema one. We're actually naming our theater. Kind of be the cinema there with the door we're using. Let's see if I can find the theater. More lobby. See, a lot of these also have lobbies going into them, big entryway. It's kind of the whole theme of the, there you go. So there's the theater. So the Savoy. And again, if you're just looking at this and you don't want to buy the book, just Google these names and theaters. And you're going to find a million images. So Mayfair, again, just a giant lobby. It's got a little, probably a little mannequin in there. 
vintage posters. And again, it's all the presents, so it's you know the big atmosphere of walking into these rooms first and then getting into the theater itself. This one you can see is just immensely elaborate. There you go. So, but what's funny, old CRT projector from the 1990s and so on. And then I think this is the last one. So this is probably the most flagship one out of all of them, except for that Zigfield one in the beginning. But again, the ceiling and the lobby. Just amazing. And then there you can see the theater. You've got another projector. It's old CRT. I guarantee every single one of these projectors has had updated equipment. I guarantee they all have kaleidoscapes. They all have laser projectors. But this is what was done in 96, 7, and so on. And then what's cool is they've got, if you go through this, there's a ton of architectural plans on these. You can see just the amount of equipment. Keep in mind, this is you know 1995 or 6 when this was probably built, maybe even earlier. Uh, just a massive amount of gear. And then look at the monster, just monster amplifiers. And then what also I like about this is it gives you the equipment layout, the designer who did this um, on all these rooms. So ton of Southern California, a bunch of jobs in Florida, Texas, but gives you a layout and the equipment list for each room, which is super cool. So that was his first book. Um, again, it was 1997. So that's the Theo Calamaracus Private Theaters. And then the second one, which has actually got more information and more theaters, it doesn't have a few of the fold-out pages, but this is The Great Escapes. And again, it's got the foreword, all the information you need on this. And so he's talking about designing theaters, all his good stuff. You'll find quite a bit of videos on Theo on the uh, YouTube. And then Dean Koontz, famous uh, author. And then some behind-the-scenes stuff. And then I'll jump through to the theaters here. So... The Kiev Theater. And what's cool about this one is I think every one of these has a brief architectural drawing, which is super nice. And again, I use these for ideas. You can, uh, you'll can, you want to pick these up. If you're into home theater and you don't know about these books, you're definitely going to want to get them. And again, you can get them for as low as like $5, but spend $20 or $30 and you'll, you'll get a nice, decent copy. I've seen some new ones for $75, $80. And I have a couple of new sealed ones, but I'm not selling them. That's part of my collection. And again, just real elaborate theaters. Chandelier. It's a little bit more of a modern theater. This one's, uh, this book is pretty new, so it's hard to flip through. But again, there's a brief architectural drawing on it. Again, amazing lobbies. Uh, entrance, you know, foyers. But again, look at that. Just a super cool sketch on what they did there. Marquee with the arcade there. That's awesome. And then, again, I'm not sure how well these are pulling into the camera, but we'll see what, uh, see what happens. King Kong, that's awesome. And then again, more drawings like that, which is super fun to see if you're doing anything like that. Stained glass. And then again, the theater itself, and you can tell, I mean, look at, look at the size of this thing. So, you know, that's four rows of five theater seats, and it's got outer walkways around. So, you know, you're figuring that's a 40 by 50 room. It is rectangle, which is kind of odd, but the theater itself is not inside of it. And then, I mean, just imagine that. So, there you would step up to that walkway around it, so that makes more sense now. Giant motorized uh, drapes there. There you go. So you can see how it's stepped down. And this is just a giant flagship theater. Definitely in the millions of dollars to build that. And then first run theater. Not quite as elaborate as the last one, but it's got this awesome ceiling architectural feature that's on the cover. And you can see the initial rendering or sketch. The Nile, not really my style, but I'll show you guys this one. Uh, still, you know, amazing work by whoever built it out. So, get back into this here. So, the jewel, and if I recall, this is relatively a small one. Yeah.
and I marked all these previously. The Tuscany, this is pretty cool. Again, not my style on this one, although I do like the stone. I don't like the colors and I don't like the murals. And then the Digital Palace. So this is the guy who actually created voicemail. Um, this theater is in Indianapolis and this is a, this is a serious, serious room. Uh, and has been in a bunch of magazines and dealer shows and booths and you can just tell the sheer size of it that's actually just the lobby of it and the ceiling and then there's the theater so it's just surely it's two stories plus lobby and entrance so just an amazing room and uh if you're an old timer guy in the home theater he also this guy also created like power play and eshent so he's uh He's definitely been around, and I think he's retired on Hawaii now, if I recall. So South Beach, again, not really my style with these outer kind of murals and drawings around the room, but again, nevertheless, pretty amazing work. So kind of another classic Art Deco type theater. Again, all the vintage old gear. If you're into that old vintage gear or even in the modern gear, this stuff's all pretty cool. I still seem to think that these old amps sound better. Super cool popcorn machine, espresso machine. This one's kind of weird if I recall. Super cool. And then again, about another giant entrance marquee with LED and lights. And then look at the scroll work on that door. With that light, it's probably 50 grand, who knows. So a little sitting room, bar. Again, I'm not a big fan of that type of stuff, but there you go, there's the theater itself. And again, two racks of gear. Old Richard Gray Power Company, that's pretty funny. There's an Eshent. And there's the room itself. So again, the murals are kind of out of place, but look at the ceiling architecture with the lights and LEDs. And again, keep in mind, this was 17, geez, this was uh, nearly 40 years ago. Excuse me, 30 years ago. Again, they've got the drawings here, which is good for reference if you're doing stuff. And then this is a Rialto, so this is another one of those famous ones, just like that Ziegfeld or the Jones Theater in those. So this one's huge. This one's got the whole underground of this house. He's got the jewelry, the motor works. He's got, yeah, the vault. So this has been on, like, the Lifestyles of Rich and Famous, those types of uh, shows, CNBC money type things. Um, yeah, this is a big one because it's got multiple, multiple pages. There you go. Bowling alley. What's funny is the theater itself is, while it's a cool shape, is actually relatively small. And again, this book's pretty stiff and new, so it's hard to flip through. There's another picture of it. So this is one of their flagship theaters in this book. It's got 10, 15 pages on it, and you can tell it's it's pretty intense. And then the last one is the Paramount. And again, this is another big theme one that's in the big basement of a home. And you can tell it's a it's a big monster theater. So row of four, row of four, row of six, row of five. Look and that all that it's just the lobby and entryway into that theater. There you go. The collectibles. This one's way up my alley. I definitely like this one a lot. Look at that. It's just super cool wine cellar and then again not quite as much on the equipment i think i think this was more on the designers i wish they would have done the equipment on this one so again this one here was great escapes so 2003 and then this one's uh 1997 so both these are on amazon but you can find them on like half price books things like that so anyway something different for a video but uh i completely forgot about these and thought this would be a kind of a cool tell-all video uh, get you guys into this home theater stuff. All right, thanks a lot.